Hello everyone, we recently had Spotlight Caches release in Marvel Snap, and with that, with Jean Grey being featured, more people than ever have access to that card earlier than they ever have before. And so with that, there's a lot of cool ways to brew it with it. You can use it as a control element. You can leverage its ongoing ability. You can use it to guarantee that your guardians trigger. But today we're going to be doing a mesh of a couple. We're going to be doing it with the guardians. And then we also have high evolutionary, not for the big massive evolved hulks, but more so for the ability to have the guaranteed locations for our affliction to hit the guaranteed locations for our guardians to hit allowing us to more easily lock down those other locations later on in the game. And so we're going to go ahead and jump straight into a gold conquest run. Thank you guys for being here. I hope that you guys enjoy it. We're going to continue brewing with the new cards. I'm working on a new brew for Noel now that he has been featured and is accessible. So definitely make sure that you stick around. But let's go ahead and jump into a gold conquest run. See if we can pull the new Jean Grey all the way through gold conquest. And there are a few decks that this won't match into incredibly well. Those that run Cosmo could be a problem, and then those that have a loot cage could be a little bit of a problem as well. But otherwise, we have a pretty good shot against most decks that are out there right now. Let's go ahead and jump straight in and see how it goes. All right. First up, we have Dark Neos, and we're actually going to be shifting our camera a little bit today. Our, earlier on in the video as well, we have the puppy cam going on in the background. I know that the basket lovers will be, uh, will be a little bit sad, but the puppy lovers will rejoice. So we're going to go ahead and play our Kitty Pride in the left lane. We start out with Kitty Pride, which is beautiful value. Um, Kiln is also going to be great for us doing our Guardians uh, on turn two, three, maybe even four. We are going to skip here and let the rocks destroy. We don't know what kind of deck they're running, so we it could be a destruction deck, something that runs a death, and then all of a sudden their death could now be free. So we have to be kind of cautious snapping on these games where we don't necessarily know what kind of deck the opponent's running. So we do get Cyclops to utilize in a kiln, which is pretty good for us. I think we do Cyclops. We can then do Thing, maybe. Lockjaw. Are they doing a high Evo Lockjaw rotation deck? If so, this may be overkill. Because they may not be fighting for that location. Let's do that. Next turn, we can try to do like a Drax in the Collapse Mine, and then a Gamora plus like Kitty Pride plus Wasp on the last turn. Because if we lock down Kiln comfortably, oh, and we had priority, we should have done Drax. Ah, what were we thinking? That's unfortunate. It is only nine though. Interesting. Do we fight them in the Lockjaw lane? Or do we give that up and go Gamora in, or eventually be fight for, fight for the middle location? Because if they rotate, they're not gonna rotate a big card. What kind of deck are they running anyways? Let's go big mid. We're going to shoot big for mid. Okay, they play for both, so it didn't matter. The Sunspot does rotate. They are losing their Warpath bonus, which they got the Warpath from the hub, so that wasn't their ideal line. The Dracula could be kind of troublesome. Um, let's see. They get Thor here. It's a bit of a Thor subject for me, I'm not going to lie. This is pretty decent. They rotate a Mjolnir. This becomes 10 plus, but we get 12, 16, 17, 18 power value. We have no idea what their Dracula pulls into. This looks like a pretty standard either Lockjaw, like Jane Jaw, or High Evolutionary Jane Jaw. And I'm worried they snapped after we did the Drax. So I'm really a little concerned a potential Shang-Chi. But at the same time, Gamora plus Kitty Pride. Ah, let's let's do the right lane. We're gonna go with our gut here. They could do like a Wasp in the right or a Mjolnir in the right, and then a big Hulk in mid, and that could be where they're fighting for. I don't know. Just a just a feeling that we have. So they rotate their Wasp into Yandu, not big, into the Hulk in mid, and so the uh, the feeling that we got was correct. I'm glad we played away from this lo location. Although 12 would have brought us up to 20, we could have still beaten that middle location because this is just a Jane Jaw. This isn't high evolutionary Jane Jaw. It's just Jane Jaw. Take... Guys, this is in gold. You think they realized it was in gold? And not in Proving Grounds? Because sometimes whenever I back out in Proving Grounds, I'm afraid that I... I'm afraid that I queued up for something bigger. Okay, we'll take the round one victory. Let's go ahead and... 
jump straight into battle number two. Maybe that one will go by just as quickly. All right, jumping into battle number two, let's go ahead and jump straight in. See if this next battle is going to be as seamless. And we still have the sleepy puppy cam. We got a couple more on the couch if we if we want to rotate. If, if viewership starts dropping, we can rotate the camera. Uh, we get our Jean Grey, which is going to be great for targeting like the thing or uh, targeting some of our other cards. Let's go ahead and play our Kitty Pride. We're going to play that quite often early. And then we'll kind of adjust from there. And we pretty hard counter their Nebula with the Kitty Pride, as long as we continue to play it there every single turn. And so that may end up being our Jean Grey lane. That way we, we have the guaranteed... Okay, it hits our Drax. I was... I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, Drax would end up being eight. Thing is actually just a little bit bigger at nine. And so Lamentus comes down, which is pretty big. So Kitty Pride actually stays on the board. That gives us a an opportunity to do, I don't know, Jean Grey. What kind of deck are they running? Nebula Spider Ham. Could it be Electro Ramp? Could it be a weird destroy deck. Don't think it's a control heavy build. I almost want to snap into this. We have Jean Grey restricting them in the Nebula lane. We do have uh, Thing, Groot, Cyclops, uh, quite a few cards for Baxter building as well. Let's go ahead and snap into it. Doing just Green Jade. Wow doing just Jean Grey this turn. Uh, our Kitty Pride will pull back in. Next turn, maybe we do Kitty Pride plus Cyclops somewhere. Oh, they storm that left location. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Is it a discard deck? Could be a discard deck. Uh, Cyclops, Rocket, Wasp. They could, they could slap us with a, a Juggernaut. <laughs> then these cards are just going to go wild. But I think uh, in terms of trying to get as much value in this left lane, this is probably the best we could do. Okay, so they do just thing, which is fine. Uh, we have the Nebula, or they have the Nebula. It will continue to scale, unfortunately. But I think outside of that, we have the Cyclops, which as long as we float two energy each turn, we will be able to continue to outscale them. And so we're going to have to make sure we don't use all of our energy for the rest of the game. And so actually, that's pretty easy to do. We have the Groot, the Kitty Pride, and then the Thing in Kitty Pride. And even if we skip one round, as long as we win the Baxter building, that will bring that one back in our favor. They could have a big Evolved Hulk. We don't know. But at least they didn't Spider-Man lock us in mid. That would have been troublesome. They went with a Professor X lock in the right lane. So they do win that one. I'm wondering if they have... Hmm. I'm wondering if they have the big evolved Hulk. We have initiative, so our thing is actually a little bit lackluster here. Actually, a lot more lackluster than I would like. If they have the evolved Hulk, depending on how many turns. So they played this on one, this on two. So that's one turn of, of soaking. Three, four, five. So only one turn max of the evolved Hulk soaking. This is what we're going to go with. Thing is only six power. Okay, whew. Uh, thing is only six power, so I don't think they could outpower uh, the 16 that we would get in Baxter building. But there's some crazy combos out there now. Go ahead and take the first round victory. Breath of fresh air uh, compared to some of the runs that I've been doing. I was working on uh, like a, a destroy list, and some of those, if you start out behind early, it gets really scary really fast. So we have Rocket Raccoon, but I don't know that we want to use him just yet because it's a Hail Mary. We don't know if they're even going to play anything. They're going to play into the right lane. They're Nebula. They got their... They got their... <laughs> what a what a read on oh, Spider-Ham. Okay, Spider-Ham is fine. It hits our, our Groot, which honestly is not the worst loss. <laughs> we now have Jeff that we can play into this right lane. Actually, no, it's not... Uh, it's not Nebula, so it doesn't matter. I was still thinking it was Nebula over there. It's... <laughs> Oh man. Okay. So we got the we got the value from Rocket, which is good. We now have our our pig. Go into Xandar. Give us extra value there. Next turn looks like high Evo. Our hand is actually pretty bad. <laughs> really bad. Uh the Cyclops. Oh no. Cyclops is big. We can go Thing. Go ahead and move our Jeff. Move old Jeffrey over into nowhere for now. 
so that Cyclops can't afflict him. The thing will help us a little bit in Necrotia. We, unfortunately, we do not have Loot Cage, so we're not going to be able to offset the Necrotia or any Affliction. Hopefully, they don't either. We'll see. Affliction has been cropping up a lot more in popularity, so I could honestly see more Loot Cage being played. Uh, okay. So their Cyclops does trigger. It does hit. We could go Star-Lord plus Wasp, but I think we're going to go Gamora and Wasp. That is a lot of commitment to that right lane, though. But they can't Professor X lock anywhere else. Ooh, they debated us. Oh, my gosh. Okay, they can Professor X lock somewhere else as long as they have the Wasp. Oh, they absolutely debated us. Now, we don't have a big finisher here because we wasted Gamora. Uh, Jean Grey and Star-Lord is only 8, 9, 10. So it's 15 power. They could pretty easily do 15 power, right? They've soaked two turns. I almost want to see. We know they don't have Wasp. I'm curious. Curiosity. Curiosity. Oh, no more puppy cam. All right, we'll rotate back. Jean Grey, Star-Lord will come down. He has the guaranteed trigger. If this evolved Hulk has not been cooking for very long. Oh, cooking just long enough. Fortunate. Had we saved Gamora, they they actually absolutely tricked us. And we knew they floated two turns, so we knew it was 16 plus the one. I don't know why we even stayed here. We were too upset about the puppy cam leaving. All right, we'll give them the two, but no more. That's the last that's the last health that they get. So we have the wasp. We have Kitty Pride. So beautiful early game. They're also not going to be able to play their Professor X unless they change this Dream Dimension location. So I really like the I really like the Dream Dimension for us. So Lemuria will stop our Kitty from Pride from pulling back in, but we can do Kitty Pride next turn. We can do uh, Star Lord to make sure that Nebula doesn't scale at all. We're gonna keep the we're gonna keep that card managed as much as possible. They could go storm here. Ooh, and then bar sinister is kind of wild as well. They could go storm here. So let's go with Cyclops. Next turn we can either do Thing, we can do Star Lord. We can do a couple of things, but I think they storm into the Nebula lane. And the bad thing is we can't outpower an evolved Hulk here. We can outpower an Evolved Hulk with like a Gamora, Kitty Pride, and Wasp, though. So as long as we win uh, this Dream Dimension lane, I think we're okay. We're going to snap into it. I guess since we lost the Sleepy Puppy Cam. Excuse the dog hair on the ground. It's hot here. <laughs> it's hot here in Texas, and so they're shedding. Ooh, they storm the Bar Sinister location. Not the one that I thought they were going to storm. That's kind of unfortunate. Do we give do we give that location up? We might give it away. Um, otherwise, we're looking at like a Star Lord, Wasp, Kitty Pride situation, which I guess is not terrible. In all honesty, this is five six. So if they don't really commit over here, then we have a chance. If they do, we get a little bit more reach, but still probably not a chance. Let's do that. Cyclops will trigger um, and reduce the power of Nebula, giving us a little bit more scalability there. Okay, that's a big, uh, it's a big thing that they got there. Fortunate, unfortunate how big your your thing is in that lane. Okay, so just Drax, just Kitty Pride, just Groot just thing they can't professor x they can't spider-man so we don't have to worry there i think we go just Drax. that's eight this is four five six seven eight plus we keep the drax in case we get a rocket maybe more upside if we don't hit it because we'll at least still... I mean, I guess it's the same upside either way. Yeah, it's fine. We're going to go this. They do play for mid. Ooh, Spider-Ham hits Gamora. And so I'm actually kind of glad that we saved our Drax. But 
this not being like an absolute win location is kind of scary because now they're evil Hulk again. Last time it was like 16. How many times have they floated this game? So Nebula on one, nothing on two. So that's one float. Float on five. So one in five. So that's 16 power. This is going to be eight. We can't beat an Evo Hulk that they've had since the start of the game. If they've missed at least. If they've missed one, then this is still a tie. Actually, Dr instead of Drax, the thing is more. Let's do it and hope. They could also play in Dream Dimension. Oh, God. They are absolutely just handling us every step of the way. I mean, that was good. That was a good read. That was a good, uh, like, gut call. That probably wasn't easy to make, in all honesty. That's unfortunate. It's one of those unfortunate uh, plays. Marmont is bringing out the... All of my dogs keep leaving me. Marmont's bringing out the big plays. I don't think we can rotate any further. There, we can rotate just a little bit further for the last sleepy puppy cam. After this, we're done. We have no more puppies. That is the last of our puppies to, to showcase. Uh, so Rocket Raccoon in Westview. Or just hold the Rocket Raccoon. We can also try to, to snipe out their Nebula again. Let's hold the Rocket Raccoon. It's pretty good in unison. Ah, oh, well. Pretty good in unison um, with... Like some of our other guardians towards the end of the game, but we'll see. Let's go rocket, maybe Jean Grey over there on the last turn. They don't play into the nebula lane. That's unfortunate. Okay, so Grand Central. Let's do Jean Grey. We'll then do Cyclops on four. That will afflict and soak <coughs> and uh, take away some of their upside. It also makes it hard for them to play for some of those other locations. So let's do Cyclops and then depending on if they play here or not. They play one card, two cards. Grand Central is going to get them pretty close to having that right lane capped out. Marmont, you've absolutely been swindling me. We need a we need a four cube comeback here. Now, Grand Central could pull into their evil Hulk, and that would be devastating. They could Professor X lock before Grand Central can pull in, but I think with Cyclops, we'll, we'll have that one out paced or outshined. Okay, so they go Cyclops as well. Perfectly fine. The question now becomes, do we play a card or do we just let it pick? We're going to let it pick. Um, we're going to we're, we're gonna play Thing. That gives us a guaranteed nine value. They do fight for... Ooh, do they have a Wasp? Wa oh, no. Did they just beat us? Wasp plus Professor X. Wasp plus Spider-Man. Unless we draw into our Jeff, we're we're dead here. They did have the Professor X, but they didn't go with it. So they can play into Morag. Interesting. Marmont. Not a fan. We're going to retreat out. Now it comes down to the five in a row. The five in a row for a comeback is what we would need. Man, if only we had Jeff. We could absolutely... So steal this one away. Jeff and Morag, Drax and Morag, guaranteed four cubes. And we have shown we have showed Jeff. Maybe they choose to retreat here, knowing that we have that possibility. Yes. So we don't lose any any bars of health. We still have our four. The the possibility and the threat of knowing Jeff is out there does so many things. Um, like just makes lockdown a little bit harder when your opponent has a Jeff because you can't guarantee those things that you would otherwise and so we'll take it we will absolutely take it okay so los diablo space will destroy one of the locations we have our wasp spider ham it's our thing so now it's just a big four six elysium leads to some big big reduction i think we're gonna skip again they could storm that lane i guess storming that lane would be kind of uh unfortunate but if they're gonna storm they they're gonna if they're gonna storm they're going to storm Los Diablos space. That way it doesn't destroy Elysium. And so I think we have a pretty good read on this left lane. Let's go Groot and Star-Lord. I'm going to save a rocket. I'm going to save our wasp. Um, That's my read and I'm sticking to it. Because if I'm them, that is where I'm storming. Oh, they just go Cyclops. Interesting. Okay, the read was a little bit wrong, but right at the same time. 
so we've got Groot and Star-Lord both taking the Cyclops Affliction, unfortunately. Taking one for the team. Okay, so now Kitty Pride. We don't have our Cyclops, though. Or Jean Grey to really restrict what they can do and when, when and where they can do their things. Let's go Pig in the right lane. We'll go Kitty Pride into mid. I'm also going to go Rocket into mid on the gut read. On the gut read that they may use Professor X here. They could also Professor X into Los Diablos space. We don't know. But I'm going to use Rocket into mid. Oh, no, they go. They definitely they definitely go heavy in that left lane. OK, so Spider-Man and Nebula. OK. We can, I mean, unless they move and then Professor X, we get a we get some decent value. Jeff is going to stop the scaling, so that's good. If they're expecting the scaling, maybe we can swindle them that way. Let's go Kitty Pride. We will do our high evolutionary and then Jeff. And we're looking at a very poor hand. <laughs> Hopefully the opponent is as well, though. And so they go. Do they go Professor X here now? No, Dr. Doom is kind of interesting. Kind of wild. Kind of wildly interesting. Mildly, wildly interesting. So if they don't use all of their energy here, which they shouldn't, they'll have one extra Cyclops is going to hit. So this goes down to 10. We need four more in this lane. Just to tie. Is this where we is this where we end? We have three cards in hand. Hulk. Wasp. Storm. We're going to go with this and I don't know. We shouldn't though, right? They do the evil Hulk since we're tied here. That doesn't give us what we want or need. We could be up eight bars now. No, we could be up four bars now. They retreated again. I mean, I'm glad they did. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad they did. We still have four bars of health. I'm guessing I don't know what they had. They may have been assuming that we could have gotten more than four in that left lane. Potentially we get Kitty Pride. We get Gene. So we'll be able to really greatly control where the opponent can play here. Let's go Kitty Pride in the left lane. We'll see. We'll see if we're able to hold this one down. <laughs> we're down. We're down atrociously. But we're not out yet. OK, so Onslaught Citadel. We don't have any ongoings, neither do they. So that's not a that's not a positive or a negative location for us. Let's go Kitty Pride so that it continues to scale and we stop the Nebula. We keep it cheap. Next turn, Jean Grey in the Onslaught Citadel location. I think that's what we go with. We want to make sure that if they uh, if they decide to storm a location, if they're looking to Professor X or Spider-Man, we make it more difficult for them. And so ooh, ooh, we can do this. The Kitty Pride plus the Cyclops in the flooded location is kind of big. Now they could do something similar. They could have a Wasp and then a Wasp and Thing. Potentially, uh, they could also do Jeff here to bypass that first card restriction for Jean Grey and then play another card wherever. Uh, that's a that's another small like added benefit of having the Jeff. Okay, so Wasp and High Evolutionary, not the thing, but High Evo. So we just have to soak for the next two turns. We can't use all of our energy for the next two turns. Ooh, and we play Jeff over there on the last turn. Uh, no big deal. Let's go. Do we go Kitty Pride and Groot here? I think we do. That gives us a good value. It helps our Kitty Pride out dramatically on the last turn we could do kitty pride star lord jeff we could also do thing and jeff to make sure that cyclops soaks um it really depends on if they play their jeff here or not spider-man lock is unfortunately pretty big we do get the groot but we would have to make a decision of playing in the onslaught citadel lane or playing in the flooded lane with our Jeff. So if they go Dr. Doom, right? Dr. Doom is going to be pretty big for them. They go Dr. Doom here because that's a five power resource. Five is going to bring them up to 11. So this is eight, nine, 10, 11. Ooh, that just forces a tie. 
But if we do this, it's going to be four power over here. We do this and we soak somehow. And this is going to be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine total, and so that beats them doing a Doctor Doom over into this lane. We beat them with a Doctor Doom over here because that's only about, about seven. If we're ever going to risk it, we might as well risk it here. Doctor Doom mid, is, is the read right? If the read is right, then we get four cubes here. And uh, we are going on our merry way so far. They do use the Doctor Doom, hoping that it gives them the lead in the flooded location, but by being able to play the Jeff over there, by being able to get our Cyclops to negatively flick them, we are able to hold down the four and we are back in this battle. It is now a an even grudge match. Maybe we can bring this back. Maybe the sleepy puck, maybe the sleepy puppy cam back there is what is gonna make this happen. Okay, Isle of Silence. So no Professor X lock over there. That's the only ongoing that they have. And so Spider Ham hits our thing. Spider Ham is so problematic. <laughs> when he hits, he hits so big. But whenever you're running something like an Infinite, it's uh, or maybe even an Agatha, it's definitely uh, something that is appreciated. The Strange Academy will move the cards on five. We're going to go ahead and play Jeff. We have Star-Lord and Rocket, but right now we can't guarantee that they're going to trigger anywhere. I have the compulsion to do this. Anticipating the storm play. I'm not going to, but this is my gut. My gut tells me to play these two <laughs> these two uh, guardians in Murder World. But instead, I'm going to do something like uh let's save the rocket. We're just going to do Star-Lord. <laughs> I'm glad we I'm glad we didn't listen to our gut. Oh, they stormed the middle location. So it was storm. Just wasn't the right location. And so we get Star-Lord there. Now we just need to drop We could drop thing, but that's not huge. I guess thing and Thing and Wasp help get that extra reach. We can always move Jeff over. On the last turn, we have Gamora and Rocket. So we'll probably do like a high evolutionary this next turn. Oof. So they dropped <laughs> they dropped Thing on us. So now Jeff is uh, exactly zero. Okay. So high Evo here isn't any better than doing a Groot. Let's do Groot, but where? A Spider-Man lock is really, really scary, right? Listening to my gut again. Spider-Man lock. They can't Professor X lock here. So if they Professor X lock, it'd have to be here. They can't really comfortably Spider-Man lock. Um, I mean, they could here. They could here. And honestly, maybe they do over here. I don't know. My gut's telling me go to the right. Um, Spider-Man lock, if we hit both of our Guardians, will get some additional kind of reach. And so we'll see. We're pumping uh, 10 power on this turn and so we outscale the spider-man now all we have to do is outscale the left lane as well do they stick this one out is what i'm curious about let's do the gamora we're gonna do kitty pride just for giggles um not not for any other reason than like maybe they throw an arrow but that wouldn't that wouldn't win them the game right here so dr doom doesn't do it for them dr doom and wasp could put them up here but then would that 10 power Ooh, that 10 power Ooh. What do we think the chances are, you guys? Doctor Doom and Wasp. Because Doctor Doom in Murder World, we know that they know that it's not going to trigger our Guardians. We bring them up to nine. Wasp would bring them up to ten and us down to nine. <laughs> Jeff being zero is so problematic. Um, it would just be such an easy play if Jeff was not zero. I think we're this is. <sighs> I had convinced myself that they had it, uh, but it was one of those leaps of faith. We were going to jump in. I'm glad that they did not have it, or if they did, I'm glad they didn't see it. We have maybe one more round to bring this thing back home. Okay, so Sacred Timeline could give us another, another Jeff, another Wasp, another Star-Lord, both of which would be kind of cool. Spider-Ham hits our Jean Grey. That's unfortunate. But it doesn't completely like, break the deck either. Let's go Jeff. If we get a one cost, so Kitty Pride, then we'll go Star Lord, Kitty Pride, and Wasp on this on the left lane on this next turn. But we don't. So instead, we'll go Cyclops. 
Next turn, we can do Star-Lord Wasp, Drax Wasp. We can really start reaching for this left lane. Ooh, they storm. No, they Nebula. They Nebula into Hala. They're going to storm it. I've never been more certain of a storm in my life. All right. Let's go ahead and tap out this lane. We'll get a Resurge. We'll get another Jeff. We'll be able to do Drax plus something in Hala next turn. Now, maybe they don't. Uh, maybe they don't storm this Hala location. But I feel like they... It, I feel like they wouldn't risk their big power plays over there. Uh, oh, no, they just dropped the thing. Okay. They did technically risk it. All right, so let's go. Ooh, Kitty Pride is a bit late to the party. Always nice to see her, though. Do we go Drax? We're going to have Star-Lord, Star-Lord, Jeff on the final turn, which is kind of cool. And then Wasp. Uh... Yeah, let's go. Let's go, Drax. I don't think they play in the Hall. I think they play in Sacred Timeline. We'll see. It's kind of hard for them to lock us out of a location because we, we've already played so heavily in the Sacred Timeline. And then if they lock us in Hala, then it really just comes down to Miniaturized Lab. Plus, we have two Jeffs that we can use. <coughs> and so we do hit the Drax. Spider-Man. So the Spider-Man lock is not going to be what they need it to be. I think this is. I think this is all she wrote. Jeff stops him from scaling, brings us up to 11. Jeff moves over, brings us up a little bit more, right? Wait, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, that brings us to a, just a tie. Us letting them scale one turn could have been awful. So this would be 10. So the Star-Lord, Star-Lord would end up being 10 power. And the Wasp is just an extra one. We can't play the Wasp over here or else that would give us the, the extra reach that we needed. Let's do this. Uh, we can't retreat or there's no point in retreating. We've already fully committed. We'll see. We'll see if it's enough. I don't know that it is. Like several big cards here just could end up taking us away. Cyclops, Jeff, Wasp. Does the Cyclops soak here? It does. Leading that second one into a tie. We win the left lane by, <laughs> we win the left lane by nine. And so we are able to hold down the whole thing. Marmont, very good game. It was very stressful back and forth. We will go ahead and take the uh, we'll go ahead and take the eight round victory for battle number two. Let's go ahead and watch the animation scroll into battle number three, and then we will jump straight in. All right, jumping straight into battle number three. Let's see if we can bring this home. We've had some we've had some difficult battles. Let's see if we can bring it the rest of the way. All right, and our final big bad opponent is True Titan. And so Great Web. It can be problematic because it's hard to control. Daily Bugle gives us Polaris. Okay, so they could be running some kind of control deck. Do we think they play into Great Web or away from it? I'm gonna I'm gonna play I'm gonna play Star Lord into Daily Bugle. Then we can do Jean Grey, and then every time we play a resource into the Nebula Lane, it's making it harder for them to cap it out and for us to cap it out by pulling one into Great Web. Okay, so the Invisible Woman here is unfortunate. Polaris Invisible Woman. Interesting. Not Cerebro 3. Maybe it's a Jean Grey control. So what do they play here? Our Jean Grey, moves, of course, moves over into Great Web. That's so unfortunate. Let's uh, actually, this is pretty big, right? We have initiative. We're going to play Rocket. We're going to use their Polaris against them to pull the Invisible Woman out of Great Web forcing this and this to reveal so that we know what we're dealing with. So Rocket will trigger, easy trigger. Polaris moves the uh, the Invisible Woman. They are now going to have to show us a little bit. Okay, so Maximus and then Polaris of their own pulls our ninja. That's a little unfortunate. Ugh. Well, that's very unfortunate, actually. Because now Great Web is uh, it's unwinnable. Uh, ooh, Spider Ham hits high, high Evo. That's good. Juggernaut also comes down. This is a. Oh, no. This is a Silver Surfer deck, right? Silver Surfer deck that runs Killmonger, Shadow King. Shadow King here would be so problematic. Do we risk four this early? Silver Surfer is a tough one for really any deck right now. Silver Surfer, just the tech cards and the the, the abilities that they have is are, are so phenomenal. Do they go in the right lane or do they just play into mid instead? 
I've already played two of their big behemoths. Maybe a Killmonger back here. I don't know. We're going to risk it. Hope to see the split. Hope this is not Shadow King. And hope this is, what, Silver Surfer? Brood. Okay, well, that is unfortunate. So we knew what the possibilities were. That was just unfortunate. Had we went something a little bit smaller, so like a Drax in Shadowland, we could have we could have put that one back in our favor. All right, we lost the. I think we're losing the last puppy. All right, so the first location is Limbo. This uh, the Invisible Woman tech is one that I've is one that I've known about. I haven't done a lot of testing on it, but it makes sense. It's a good bounce. Uh, Kind of counter. Basket enjoyers rejoice. It is back. All right. It's a good bounce. Uh, counter plus a lot of one costs are being floated right now without any protection. Central Park is fodder for the Killmonger. I think it's okay. We have Kitty Pride. We'll continue to just slowly pump. Okay. The Invisible Woman is unfortunate because we can't really... Ooh. They can't really do anything in the Crimson Cosmos lane now. Most Silver Surfer decks only run one five cost card or one card over three. And so Crimson Cosmos is one of the most problematic locations uh, for this type of deck. <laughs> and we're gonna try and capitalize. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do Jeff over there. As the game progresses, we can do like Thing, we can do some of our other cards over there as well. They pull, use Polaris, pull one of our squirrels over. So we're doubled up in Central Park, unfortunately. Let's do this number. We don't have initiative right now, but this will allow us to start negatively afflicting their Polaris. I assume they eventually use Killmonger to clear out the squirrels, but at least we're negatively afflicting the Polaris in the process. So they go Maximus. That is a, that is a big Maximus. I did not know that that was a, uh, a feature of the thing. All right, okay. Focus. Where are we playing? Uh, Juggernaut, Juggernaut. I think we just do Thing and Kitty Pride. Uh, yeah, they have initiative. So I'm not concerned about the Kitty Pride here yet. <laughs> what do they play behind the Invisible Woman? It has to be either Sarah or Spider-Man, right? So I'm gonna do Kitty Pride in mid. Um, no, we want to make sure we don't get initiative, right? So Drax over here is not great. Anything in Limbo is also not great. So I think we need to do... Okay. I was trying to figure out how to navigate that one so we didn't have to worry about the Killmonger for the Kitty Pride because it was going to be a 12 power resource for one cost. Something we absolutely needed. They do retreat, uh, I think realizing how tough that right lane was going to be to compete for. And we'll take it. We will take it where we can. I assume, we haven't seen some of their cards, I assume either the Sarah or Spider-Man, there's a mixture kind of going on between, you know, a, a battle of which one, who uses what. And they have Invisible Woman again. So it's one of those cards that, <coughs> it's like Jean Grey. I haven't gotten her all that often, but if you can draw her every game, it's fantastic as a way to protect yourself against like the Kitty Prides and uh, the Rockets. And we don't have any way to play around it necessarily, which is uh, another part of the unfortunate thing. Okay, so we do get Kitty Pride. We can't play our one costs in this lane, though. Is the is a part of the issue. We can always do Invisible Woman of our own, and then on the last turn hide our Kitty Pride behind it. Kind of like kind of like that idea. Ooh, they storm the Daily Bugle. That, that's the first time we've seen their storm variant, right? So the Jeff comes down. Nobody wins Eternity Range. I guess we could have competed for it, but that's fine. I actually think we do something like Jean Grey and Kitty Pride and just leave the flooded location alone. Now, I know that this leaves them open for the Spider-Man play. But it also gives us a guaranteed target for like the Drax. It makes some of their other play lines a little bit clunkier. They snap, but I think we're going to stick into it. Maybe this is the Juggernaut. <laughs> Juggernaut and then Spider-Ham. 
spider ham hits our tracks which is so unfortunate because that was that's what we were going to lean into for this next turn oh well so who has initiative here it's a it comes down to the tiebreaker and then it comes down to the 50 50 because we're both ahead by one we're both ahead by two my goodness i think we do thing and rocket the only bad sided thing is if they do Shadow King, they can just set these back to normal. But that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so they do our Rocket Raccoon and they hide a card here. So either a 3 or a 4 cost. Most likely a 3 though. Um, so Silver Surfer maybe. We can't play our Kitty Pride into Hell's Kitchen or Hellfire Club. We have initiative, so if they do a Shadow King and then buff, that's problematic. We're going to, instead of moving Jeff here, we're going to move it into mid. And I'm going to let this one rip. We we may not have the best opportunity. Uh, the Invisible Woman is actually a pretty cool tech for this deck. <coughs> so if they use Killmonger, it's going to be, uh, actually, it's going to be a positive two for them in that trade. Because we both lose this, but we also lose Kitty Pride. Oh, that was incredibly close with the Shadow King coming down, right-sizing all of the power in the lanes, bringing our Groot back to four, but we were able to win it by one, barely. And so we are still in this. It's a tough battle. It is not a favorable matchup. So many effects and decks right now use either buff components or being able to scale or be able to soak additional energy. Shadow King has so much value and he continues to get more as we get some of these other cards. And so it'll be it'll be interesting to uh, to see how the the uh, Silver Surfer decks continue to evolve. So now some are starting to experiment with Jean Grey. Not all of them are having success, but it's not a terrible card for it. And then we also have uh, I think it's uh, Dakin coming out with that is a three four that generates a one cost. So to be used in unison with Killmonger, which will be able to bring it up to a three eight, which is insanity. Um. I mean, they're going to get extra energy, but so will we, right? Like, we have a lot of reach. But do they get more value from that extra energy than we do? I th Probably. Probably. Because this is going to use almost all of our cards. Let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and send it. We will get the extra three. So I think we both have the extra three now, right? They do use Rogue. It still is Jean Grey. Invisible Woman, so they're not going to be able to hide a Killmonger anymore. So depending on uh, priority... That could be, uh, could determine. So actually haven't played a whole lot in White Room. I think we get it, even though we revealed second. I think it acts like the Raft where we both had those cards there. Leech is wild. We get Thor, which muddies up our draw, but also gives that kind of uncertain amount of power here. Okay, so we have Drax, High Evo. We do get that power bonus, which is beautiful. We have initiative here. So I th think... We go high Evo and call it good. They have so much energy. They could set up a Killmonger so easily. I think we just do high Evo. <laughs> we don't go with the scaling for Kitty Pride. So the Sarah plus Storm. Okay, so they take away the Elysium location, but we both have uh, so much extra power now. Or so much extra energy. And so we draw into our Cyclops. Big Cyclops for us. I almost want to cap this one out with the Jeff. They're going to have to cap out their location. Unless they play Jeff, they're going to have to cap out this lane this turn. So then we have an entire next extra turn to be able to uh, use whatever we draw into. This wins, right? That's <laughs> not crazy. This wins, right? Not having the ability on Kitty Pride is fine. This will afflict negatively here. Yeah, I think we're all right. They only have three cards left in hand. If, I mean, if they have a jet, no, we've seen their entire deck. They can't do that. They could do something and then a juggernaut. Ooh. Could they do that? Oh, they can. Oh, no. Oh, something and then a juggernaut caps us out entirely. Oh, we didn't see that coming. <laughs> Yep. Yep, absolutely. Shoot. Shoot. 
Not until I locked in the turn did I see that. And we do get the Mjolnir, so had we played our Kitty Pride, we actually could have had extra space to play the Mjolnir. That's unfortunate. We played that so poorly, and we could have played it better. There was a way to win this one. That's what feels the worst about it. Um, I just forgot about their Juggernaut entirely, which is bad. Um, forgot about their Juggernaut entirely. Had we not, we could have played a card here. That way, our Drax, whatever, would have been higher power. Maybe played a card here, but also left our Kitty Pride so that if things got pushed, we had a space to play. Ah, I'm disappointed in myself. I'm disappointed in that play. And so now we're we're back we're back to being down. Otherwise, we could have uh, we could have cinched it in there. So if we lose this one, it's on us. It is on us. We uh, we learn, we grow, we get better. Um, the white hot location is wild. It's wild, you guys. So let's do Star Lord. If they play a card, they have to play it here. Then next we can do maybe a Jean Grey. We do have Thing. They have Spider Ham, so it would hit one of these two. For all the marbles, though, have the Invisible Woman, which is scary. It's not the worst thing. It does allow an earlier curve like Silver Surfer and some really cool things. I, I do like that line. Now, Washington, D.C. is fantastic for their broods. Unfortunately, it's unfortunately fantastic for their broods. They, they storm Jotunheim, yeah? Ooh. We're okay, right? I think we're okay. We either do Jeff or we do a Wasp and then a Thing. To be able to play for that location, they have to have Spider-Ham in hand. We can also reinforce it later with Jeff. I don't like playing the Wasp this early, but it is... Oh, they they have Spider-Ham in hand. If this is Brood as well, that, like, that seals the deal, right? Juggernaut is wild again. And the Spider-Ham behind the Invisible Woman. It's huge. I don't like it. I don't like it, but it's... Uh, I don't like it, but I definitely have to respect it. I don't think Groot will hit anything here. There, actually, there's no way that it can. But it's still four power. I'm looking to do like a Drax or something big and actually doing something big into Pet Mansion on that last turn actually isn't all that ideal, honestly. Oi, the Spider Ham Juggernaut monstrosity this could be a sarah it could be a three cost we don't know for sure so cyclops or drax and do they have a way to buff that right lane they may not have gotten into their silver surfer copium copium shadow king could be here would make our drax and star lord much less impactful i guess cyclops even if he triggers he's only at best a base drax let's do this we'll send it <clears throat> Hopefully they don't have the Silver Surfer, but if they do, they deserve this win. The Broods here, big. Huge. The Spider Ham. That's what they had to have. Shadow King, big. Polaris is big, and they win the tiebreaker by one. Well, we all know Silver Surfer is a menace of a deck. I am a little bit bummed because I, I played that poorly. There were there were opportunities to win that one had I played it better. But we are gonna we are going to go ahead and end the video there. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. True Titan, congrat congratulations on your infinity ticket. We are gonna see the failure screen. Failure happens. And so I, I saw a couple of comments about how I can farm gold with really any deck. Some decks I am able to get in and get out really easily especially if i have a good sense on what the meta is and i get lucky on some matchups but i also lose some so i don't want you guys to feel like i just breeze through absolutely all of them i, I have a pretty good record but there are losses in there sometimes too and so i hope that you guys enjoyed the video anyways if you did make sure to give it a like and a comment down below as always this has been tlsg later guys